Thanks, Blair. Sean, it's great to meet you. My name is Tessa, and I'm a competitive athlete myself, and I know lots of FIRST members are too. So I'm excited to have you here on this week's Beyond the Bots show, where we're exploring the intersection of STEM and sports. So when did you start playing baseball? Uh, I started playing baseball, I think I was four years old um, when I started playing t-ball. So I'm 34 years old now, so it's been a, uh, quite a long journey. That's fantastic. Now, how do you use math and numbers when it comes to baseball? Uh, well, in baseball, we try to quantify absolutely everything. I think baseball is notorious for having a statistic for absolutely every facet of the game. Um, but now the game is starting to change and um, we're starting to use technology in some really, really cool ways to tr we can track the spin of the baseball and and we access that it spins on on its way to home plate after the pitcher throws it. And um, we can tell uh, how much vertical break, um, you know, positive or negative the ball is getting. Um, the way we're, we're tracking um, our workloads as athletes, whether it's in the weight room or out on the practice field, uh, we all wear, uh, we wear sensors on our, on our arms that attach uh, on our forearm and that can track the way that uh, we're throwing and it can quantify the torque that we're putting on our elbow. And the teams are now able to take that data and that information and help a player maybe become more effective or help them stay healthy over the course of a long season. We also now on our staff, on our coaching staff uh, and our strength and conditioning staff, we have a lot of uh, people that have a background in STEM because they're the ones that are helping uh, interpret this information, analyze this, and come up with the uh, suggestions for adjustments we might need to make or, um, you know, different training could try or different um, biomechanic movement patterns we could try to get into to help ourselves stay healthy and be more effective. Um, so it's really cool to see the way that baseball has embraced them, and um, it's definitely something that's going to make our game better and, and keep players healthy and prolong uh, many players' careers. Um, so baseball is um, really the future is really bright. We're doing some some really really cool things when it comes to science and technology. That's amazing. This month, National Geographic and ESPN have a new book coming out that explores how math and analytical skills are used in baseball, and it features you in the foreword of the book. What made you want to do this? I wanted to be a part of it because um, I want people to, to fall in love with baseball the way that I have. Um, I'm very biased, but I think it's the greatest game in the world. and. I wanted to share that with people. Um, I wanted people to be able to see um, the way that we're using science and technology in baseball right now um, to continue to push the game forward. Um, you know, diving into the science and technology stuff um, has helped me extend my career. I'm still very much learning. Um, and um, I think it's something that could help extend my career by another few years. Um, but really at the end of the day, um, I just wanted to share this game. I wanted to share my love of baseball, um, with baseball fans out there. That is so cool. So I know you're involved in many things off the field. We know you're passionate about social justice. Can you tell us a little bit more about that? Um, so my wife and I have tried to, um, stay involved in the communities that we've played in over the course of my career. And, and I think it's really helped us form a special connection with fans and with the communities uh, in the cities that we've played in. Um, we are new to Cincinnati. Um, we actually have not even been there yet because we're still in Arizona for spring training. So we're not sure yet what, um, what kinds of groups we're going to uh, work with or, or what kind of things we're going to get involved in in Cincinnati, but we are very excited about 
about learning um, about the city and the community. Uh, when we were in Washington, D.C., when I was playing for the Nationals, um, my wife was on the board of a group called SMILE, uh, which stood for uh, Sexual Minority Youth Assistance League. Um, and it was a group that helped um, LGBTQ youth uh, in and around uh, the Washington, D.C. area, Ireland and Virginia. Um, and um, they were a great organization that did so much um, for kids that maybe were uh, high school age, um, that were, you know, learning about what it meant to be LGBT and, and they help them with everything from after school assistance to job um, programs, helping them with their resume, helping them with housing. Um, it was really, uh, they helped them be community leaders and advocates. Um, they had all of these really, really cool programs um, that we were, we were really proud to work with them. Um, so we're, ho we're, we're hoping that we'll be able to do uh, something along those lines in Cincinnati as well. So talking a little bit outside of baseball, what are your main hobbies when you're not playing baseball? I really love to read. Um, a few years ago, probably four or five years ago, um, I kind of read books. <laughs> um, and um, I just found that during a season, it was my favorite way to decompress after a game. Um, and over the course of a long season, it kind of helped me um, stay in a better spot mentally. And so um, when when we travel over the course of the season, I try to find independent bookstores in the cities that we play in. And um, I always try to keep my, uh, my reading list uh, well stocked. Um, so I'm either probably with my dog or, or read book somewhere. First teams around the world are working on identifying challenges related to sports and fitness in their community. They're constantly coming up with creative solutions with the first innovation challenge presented by Qualcomm. Now, my question for you is, what innovation would you like to see in baseball? Um, I'd like to see somehow if they could put maybe um, a sensor or a microchip inside of the baseballs that we use during the game. And um, when when a pitcher throws the pitch, um, the, the fans at home can see on these screens, um, maybe not just how fast those are going, because we get that on most of the broadcast already, but maybe how much the ball moves on its way to home plate, or what kind of spin did it have uh, when it came out of the pitch hand, and, and, and maybe that gives them a sense of, uh, maybe how much it moved or really how hard it was for the, the batter to hit it. Um, and if the batter does hit it, what was the angle off the bat at? How hard did it come off the bat? Um, um, I think integrating some of these things um, about the way that athletes are moving um, during a baseball game might help fans have a, a better, more complete understanding of just how good some of these athletes are. I'm not one of these good athletes. I can throw hard, I can't run fast, I can't really do anything else cool. But, um, you, you know, put on screen, how fast did that guy just run to first base? Uh, you know, that center fielder when the ball was hit, what was his first step reaction time? Um, because these guys are doing some incredible stuff um, that doesn't always translate when you're watching a game on TV. Um, I think fans, it would help fans get a better sense of really just how good the, the quality of play is in, in Major League Baseball today. Sean, thank you so much for your time today. I know that first team members will love being able to see how math is so useful in baseball. Good luck with your new team this season. Thanks for having me. Um, I hope to see you um, at a ball game maybe this year once it's safe. I'm not sure what the protocols are going to be yet, but um, and I also want to say good luck to you and the rest of the athletes out there.